the ruling staff. That's right. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh comes. Shiloh is a, a picture of the coming Messiah. Okay? Um, uh, and to him shall be the obedience of the people. In other words, all of the nations, all of the tribes of Israel will be obedient to Judah. And that was fulfilled. Okay? That's why the Messiah comes through him instead of through these first three guys. Okay? Anyway, so that answers that. And um, uh, where were we? We were in interesting study, though, right? I mean, this is kind of a fun chapter to go through. Um, let's see here. The, the sons of Leah. Where were we? Um, that, that, as it continues, that's just very interesting. Oh, it is interesting. 23. 23. Okay, please then. Now there were 12 sons of Jacob, the sons of Leah, Reuben, Jacob's firstborn, then Simeon and Levi, and Judah, and Ish Ishakar, and Zebulun, the sons of Rachel, Joseph, and Benjamin, and the sons of Bilhah, Rachel's maid, Dan, and Naphtali, and the sons of Zilpah, Leah's maid, Gad, and Asher. These are the sons of Jacob, who were born to him, in Padan, okay, so uh, we have the names of the children here, all right, and they weren't all born in Padan Aram, by the way. It, it says it, it, that's a generalization, but actually, what's his name? Benjamin was born on the way to, uh, uh, yeah, anyway, but it, that's a generalization of all of them. Okay, so having said that, I was wrong and I just changed it. Zilpah is the, uh, the, uh, yeah, Leah's. And then Reuben, who was born to Leah, okay, he went and slept with Bilhah, the maidservant of Rachel. Okay, so I had it, I, I just wasn't sure which is which, and then all I had to do was go one more, one more thing. But anyway, so she was the maidservant of Rachel. And, you know, it makes you wonder, doesn't it? Doesn't that make you wonder that he would do that? I mean, the whole thing, what, did she, was she unhappy with her husband? Did she entice him? I mean, I think these things, when I go through it, why, why does something like that happen? Was he, did he force her? All it says is he went up and he did it. That's all it says. But I, you have to wonder, what would make somebody do that? And then you get to 1 Corinthians 5, and these people are in the church. And he sleeps with his father's wife. <laughs> you know, and, but the thing is that... This is a picture of everything going on in the world throughout human history. That which has been will be again. That which has been done will be done again. There's nothing new under the sun, right? People are doing that right now. And it makes you think, what kind of a perverse person would go sleep with his dad's wife? Do you, do you, do, do you think that way? I mean, I just, I, I read that and I think, Ruben, what were you thinking? I, I, you know, they're, they're living in tents with each other. They're, they're not like spread all over Sarasota like me and my brothers and mom and, you know, they're right there. Yeah. yeah, and then of course it says his father heard about it. Well, duh. I mean, it's like there's no thought process. But what I'm getting at is it shows the level of depravity in us. That's the point I'm trying to make is because we don't think things through when we make bad choices, right? We, we simply don't, you know? And she's out there week after week after week devoting her life to trying to get people to make the right choice to not make the same choices that we've made in the past and we don't learn from our mistakes and we don't learn from our elders what is it i'm going to deviate real quickly don't go there but leviticus 19 i'll read you one of my very favorite verses in the entire bible it's not my favorite but it, i love this verse it's leviticus 19 and it says here um uh, and I'm going to explain why in a second. When I read him this, uh, when I read you this verse, I think it's 28 or something. Uh, you should not do not. Uh, uh, where is it? Don't cut. You know, okay, it might be down a little farther. Yeah, okay, Deuteronomy. I, I'm sorry, Leviticus 19:32 says, "You shall rise before the gray-headed and honor the presence of an old man and fear your God. I am the Lord." They've got wisdom. They've got the knowledge. They've earned a lifetime of knowledge. Rise in their presence. I love that verse because if people would do that and they would have respect for their elders, they wouldn't be making the mistakes that Reuben made right here and this guy in Corinthians made. They, they'd say, I need to think my life through a little more carefully. But none of us do. We just keep... <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I, I, I just read these things and I can't get these type of thoughts out of my head when I read them because it seems so 
blatantly obvious that we shouldn't do this. It's human nature to yeah. betray this. Right. Yes, it is. But I think part of it is because people are just taught uh, there's no responsibility. Yeah. Or well, you can't help what you do. Yeah. And it all goes back to you can't know truth. Well, yeah, that's right. And that's why this is given to us, is so we can know it. And that's, oh, but it just tells me that, you know, it's it, like I say, this wasn't in a place where they had postmodernism. This is a place where they believed in God, they were a family unit. If they did this, how much worse is it right now? You know? And it, 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 they, it, what was it? Pastor Dave, when he was still here, said that the single largest internet search continuously, continuously, day after day, is pornography. Okay? For 16 minutes, it changed when Barack Obama was elected president. He became the highest search for 16 minutes and then went back to pornography. And that is, imagine that. And people have to pay, I think, I don't know, maybe it's free nowadays, but you have to pay for pornography. Imagine the amount of money that we're spending on that. Just think of it. You know? It's, uh, whatever. And the funny thing is my friend who's, I, I grew up with her. She was there last night, the girl with her husband and two children that were sitting off to the side. They're visiting from Melbourne. I, I, she's known me for 40 years, the poor girl, Paula Johnson. Anyway, she, we were in first grade together. And she, we were at her place one day and she said, um, uh, we were talking about something. Somebody was getting divorced in our class and marrying some good-looking, or actually good-looking wife, and he's marrying another girl. And she says, doesn't that show you how little value good looks really is? She said, just think of the people in Hollywood. They're married to the most beautiful people in the entire country. I mean, that's who we're idolizing. And they're all divorced. It's not like it did anything to enhance the relationship. Nothing. Because if it did, they'd still be married. And she says, doesn't that show you how useless it is, but people are spending money. Like, it's going to get them somewhere. It's going to get them somewhere. It doesn't get them anywhere. You know? Anyway, sorry to divert on that, but I, man, I think these thoughts when I read this book. That's what this book is for, is to get us to think these thoughts and to try to clear things up in our head. Yeah, it just, and all of these are in here for a reason. They're not just little stories. To, they're for us to think through. So anyway, go ahead. Next verse. And Jacob came to his father Isaac at Mamre of Kiriath Arba, mm -hmm. that is Hebron, where Abraham and Isaac had sojourned. Okay, so that tells us after all this time, Jacob has got, been gone for over 20 years, and when he left, his father was old and in bed, and his father wanted to bless his oldest son. It ended up being Jacob, but he wanted to bless him because he said, I don't know when the, days of my, when the number of my days is going to end. 20 years earlier, he thought he was going to die. And this guy, Isaac, is still alive when he comes back. And imagine, he's been laying in bed for 20 years. Just unbelievable. Now, um, uh, going back real quickly to Reuben and Bilhah, that's all it says. That's all it says. One verse. It's not like it says, and he did this, and his father was angry, and blah, blah, blah. It's just one verse. So you have to read the rest of the Bible to know the ramifications of it. And you have to think it through. And that's why I say, it's not easy. When you read something like that, and you get one verse, you don't think, oh, why is this in here? You just read it, and you go on. But when you get somewhere later, and you see Reuben's name mentioned again, you think, oh, that's why we study. That's why we do that, is to keep understanding why is this in here. Because it's just one verse. Okay, so anyway, he gets back. Isaac is there. It says, Isaac, um, uh, oh, oh, go ahead, finish up the uh, chapter. Now the days of Isaac were 180 years, and Isaac breathed his last and died. And he gathered to his people an old man of ripe age and his sons, Esau and Jacob, buried. So Esau came back from Seir. Remember, Jacob said, he said, come and join me in Seir. And he says, I'm going to come down and join you. And he never did. Esau came back to bury his father with Jacob. So, anyway, that's the end of, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, with Jacob. That's the end of Isaac, and he's done. It's, you know, the, the Bible gets very specific on people, and it accounts their life, and then it goes on. And that's the way that God works. He's, he's getting to something greater. And so Isaac, his purpose in this book is now over, other than being mentioned in, you know, like the Psalms and here and there. But 
That's just the way it is. God has a plan, and we're just a part of it. We're not the center of it. And unfortunately, people should read this book, and they'd see we're not the center of what God is doing. We're just a little spot, and hopefully we're making the right choice because someday we will face eternity, and it's either going to be in heaven or it's going to be in hell. There are no other options given in the Bible. And so people, you know... I, I never felt this way until I became a Christian. Maybe some of you feel this way, and if not, please forgive me for looking down on people because I'm not trying to do that. But you notice how you, you go down the road and there's somebody with their music really cranked up and they think they're so cool, mm -hmm. and you think, you're just not as cool as you think. Yeah. And it, it's not that I'm trying to diminish them as a human being. It's just that they are their own little world. The whole world is focused on me. And the Bible says the whole world is focused on Jesus. Saturday, I spoke to someone, I met someone I'd never met before, said hi, I told him a name. Um, he, he said, I'm, I'm a nobody. Oh. This is how he is, I am a nobody. I've lost both of my jobs. Oh, boy. And I feel oh. so sad. And that's just that the opposite. This person, his whole life was... Revolving around a job. job. Yeah. It, that's just the opposite of the person. I was dumbfounded. I, I never had anybody respond that way. Well, I'm going to tell you something. When you hear that again in the future, here's what you can say. Because the person that thinks that they're really cool, and they say, you know, it, 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 there's, it's hard to approach somebody like that and to put them in perspective because they think they're the, the whole center of the world. But the opposite, when somebody says, I'm, I'm just nobody, all you have to do is say, do you know that Jesus Christ died for you? And... A lot of people can appreciate that. What? You know, they, they don't realize the significance of it until it's actually put in their face. That God himself loved you enough to send his son. And sometimes that's all it takes for somebody that thinks they're a nobody. Well, I told him, I said, your hope is, I said, my hope is in God. That's right. I said, that's our future. It's not government or it's not job, job, wife. You know, all the things we put our hope in. Wives are good, but, you know, they die too. Husbands die. You know, it, we just, yeah, we can't. Him, I said, are you a praying man? And he said, he is. He prays all the time. And I said, then just keep your hope. Yeah, God. that's right. That's right. I, I, you know, and that's, that's, that is as sad as the opposite. Like I say, people that think they're the, the center of the world are just as sad, but it's in a totally different context. Right. Yeah, it just different. Oh, I hate hearing that. Ah, oh, people that think they don't have value and all they need to do is look at the cross and, you know, it, it, yeah. Okay, you're you're out of here. All right, love you. Go see your boyfriend. Tell him I said hi. See you next Monday. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, chapter thirty-six, please. Does somebody else like to read? Anybody? First one. I'll do it. I okay. My eyes work. All right. Do you need glasses? No. Okay. Two weeks off. It's good that you do it. And you know what? He's going to start reading, and we got all these big names coming in about two verses. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Don't worry about it. You don't listen to what I say. These are the family records of Esau. That is Edom. Right. Okay. Now remember, Esau is Jacob's older brother. His name means Harry. Esau means Harry because he was born Harry. But then his name was changed to Edom, which means red. Okay, that's right, red. Because he the red lentil soup, he went over and lived in the land of Edom, which is over here. And the, all the land is red. It's just red ground, and so it kind of fits. You know. Anyway, go ahead. Esau took his wives from the Canaanite. Adol, daughter of Elon, the Hittite. Oha, Lipa, <laughs> daughter of Aim, and granddaughter of Zebion, the Hittite. Okay, so we have those two wives, and remember, what the parents did not like that he married those daughters. And remember that Rebecca said to uh, her son Jacob, go up and get your wife from a daughter of our people. And it, then it says that he realized that he did not, he realized that his parents were not happy with the wives that he had married from the daughters of Canaan. And so what did he do? He went and married the daughters of Ishmael, which are part of Abraham's seed, okay? So now they list those two first. Those are the two that are the daughters of Canaan. 
that displeased his parents, and then he went and married the daughters of Ishmael. Go ahead. 